Red Cell products work with Microsoft Azure to help you know the inventory of your cloud network, if your cloud network is configured well and safely, plus whether it meets compliance standards. This video guides you through the seven requirements necessary for creating a connection between Red Seal's products and Microsoft Azure. Starting at number one, we need the subscription ID found on the subscription screen. And two, we need an app that will register in the Azure Active Directory. When that happens, we can copy the application ID and the directory ID from the overview screen for the app. This will move us to our fifth requirement, the secrets value. Numbers six and seven ask us for two roles, one custom role to set a permission for the app and the other to limit the app's use. Are you ready to gather these requirements? Let's go to the menu found on the upper left corner of the screen. This menu allows us to select the Azure Active Directory, and the next part is to click the App Registrations option from the Manage menu. Within the App Registration screen, we select the New Registration link, and then we give it a name that will help us locate it in the future. After the naming, we need to define who can use this application. For us, we can keep the default or only accounts in the organizational directory for a single tenant. We do not need to establish a URI, and while we can click to read the Microsoft Platform Policies for this example, we'll just click the Register button. And we've registered an app. Now, we are on that overview screen mentioned earlier. As a reminder, we'll flash back for guidance on what data we need. Here's the application ID and the directory ID. We're not seeing that value of the secret yet, but we'll get to it soon. Since we need those IDs, let's copy them and paste them to a note. For best results, use a plain text file in .txt format. We captured the application ID and now for the directory ID. Same actions, click the copy button open the text file, and then paste it under the application ID. Okay, the IDs are saved, so now we need that secret value. If we go over to the menu on the left, we can create the secret. On the certificate screen, we can click the new client secret link. Then we'll give it a unique name, one that we can remember. Plus, set the expiration for the secret which we decided upon as a security policy within our organization. And then we'll click the Add button, and Once we created the secret, it produced a value. We need to copy it and paste it with our IDs. Great. We now have the pieces of the data for connecting our app that Red Seal will need. But we still need one more piece of data to enter into our data collection, the subscription ID. For that, we need to navigate to the home page. Click the Subscriptions link from either the Recent Navigation area of the home screen or from the menu accessed from the top left corner. And then we can copy and paste it to our text file with the other entries. We still need to complete two more actions in Microsoft Azure. So let's return to the home page to review what's still needed. We completed one through five of our list, which leaves us six and seven, or the two custom roles for our app. To create these roles, we need to go to our subscription screen. On the subscription page or screen, we can see the Access Control IAM link. Let's click it and, and find the Add option. At the click, we can pick Add Custom Role from the drop-down menu. The role needs a name, so we can find it in the list of roles we should also note that the baseline permissions indicate start from scratch. As a best practice suggestion, including a description will help identify this role's purpose to others. Next, we need to set permissions for the role. We can click the Next button or go to the Permissions link. We start this process by selecting the Add Permissions link or button. This opens an Add Permissions screen. 
This role needs to get the effective route table configured, so we enter a keyword like effective. Azure begins to narrow our search option based on that keyword. Now we'll select Microsoft Network, and then within Microsoft Network, we locate other Get Network Interface Effective Route Table and navigate down to the Add button. Here's our custom role with the Effective Route Table action permission. Our next action is to click the Review and Create button. While we quickly glance over everything, if we're good, we can click the Create button. Azure then verifies the creative role with this indicator, so we can select the OK button. We can assign our role to our app. For this, we'll need to select the Add Role Assignments button. Azure opened a sliding window, but in the event the slider does not appear, Azure provides a full screen view of the same. We need to select our custom role called Admin1, and then we need to select the app by searching its name. After we typed in our roles and began looking for our app, the main screen changed to the roles list and another way to locate roles, but we'll continue typing our app name. And now we can select our app, then navigate down the side panel to the Save button. Back at the IAM screen, we need to repeat the role assignment process. This is for a built-in role called Reader. Selecting the Add Role Assignments button opened the slider again for us to select a role. From the list of roles, we will add Reader. After selecting Reader, we need to locate our app. Here again, we type the name in and we begin seeing the results. When we see our app, we click on it and then we navigate to the bottom to click Save. Azure verified our success and we accomplished our setup. As a quick review, we grab the subscription ID, the application ID, the directory ID, and the client secrets value and save them to a text file. Then we established a custom role with get route table permission along with a reader built-in role and assign them both to our app. Hopefully this helps you with the setup requirements of Microsoft Azure. Please visit the redsail.net page for access to more of our training modules.